I think it's working. I hate tech. Um, there we go, that's working. So if I exit that, hopefully it will just keep going. All oh, right, now I can start recording. All right. Okay, so we've had a four minute buffer. I feel like um, this is the attendees I'm gonna get. Um, I'm streaming this live on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Um, now I've done the tech stuff out the way. Um, I'm now going to, just for you guys on the Zoom call, I'm gonna uh, mute the computer just because if other people join, then you know, it's uh, all gonna bing bong all over the place. Don't need that. Um, can everyone thumbs up if you can still hear me? Great. Okay. Um, so this part of the call, I get really nervous. I'm like, oh God, where am I gonna go with this? Um, it was really interesting uh, having Dennis on the messages call yesterday. Um, because I think it really segued into um, what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and I think how I want to approach this is so that I'm not like repeating the same stuff that everyone sort of says in, in, in marketing. Is It's more, I want to talk about avatar uh, in a way, it, how you, the way you should approach your, thinking about your avatar. Um, and I, I especially want to speak to uh, small business owners um, or people who need to market that don't have um, a big, you know, a marketing department or copywriters on board or, um, you know, just just all the all the stuff to go into research and thinking about things. And so I think this boils down to a few different kinds of people who this is definitely relevant for. Um, if you've got your own product or service for instance, like, um, you know, and this could boil down to as far as Facebook marketplace, for instance, but I don't suggest that because it's like, it's not very scalable. You just upload one thing, but any kind of marketplace, maybe you're selling particular items. Um, it's very small scale and you are sort of, you're charged with the responsibility of doing, of bringing in sales and doing your own marketing. It's that kind of, um, that kind of small business where it's like those, those sort of sales, like you can't really hire someone into to do your marketing for you. Or maybe, maybe some people have hired people in to do their marketing for them. And it's just like, there's this like crossover. You can't actually communicate effectively what you need the marketer to do for you. Um, I find that within my business is that I, I often need someone to come on board and help me, but I have no idea how to tell them to help me. I just like, I, I just know this is failing. And so that's one, um, you know, someone who has to do the marketing for themselves. And I also think it's great to, um, to learn these skills yourself anyway, even before you outsource them. Another one is uh, obviously affiliate marketing, which is probably, it's not that I'm going to be focusing on that today, but when you're thinking about an avatar, I should say, um, depending on the kind of the business or the marketing that you're doing, it does actually, it does change it. I don't think, I think there is a universal description for an avatar, but to um, to practically use an avatar or create one really depends on the product and what you're selling and that's why it was like quite interesting having Dennis on the um, messages call yesterday because I was able to to sort of articulate ways of thinking about the avatar in relationship to the product which I think is different based on the fact that he's affiliate marketing rather than any other thing. Um, so I'll try and explain more about that because that's pretty obscure. Um, so essentially, just to boil that all up, I want to talk about avatar, the customer avatar in a way that presumes everyone who's watching knows what it is, knows what the point of it is, knows the value of it, understands what they're doing with it. But maybe um, it, it feels quite elusive still. Like, um, and it does feel elusive. I think, but yeah. So that's kind of where that's kind of where I want to take this. Is is maybe help um, explore the concept of an avatar so that we we can apply it better to our marketing strategies. Um, so I can only really speak mostly about my experience in affiliate marketing, even though I can see how it will differ in other businesses. Um, there's this. Uh, there's this scene, I don't know if anyone has seen Mad Men, and I, a lot of my marketing experience comes from watching back-to-back -back episodes of Mad Men. That's not true, but um, there's this, this scene, and I don't want to do any spoilers, but you know, one agency gets absorbed by this other massive agency, and uh, the main character ends up 
who is it by all means like a genius he's in this he kind of goes into this boardroom and he's he's got to now help all these other like really advanced marketers sell this other product and he's used to sort of being at the top of the pyramid and I remember that was the first time I really saw like the avatar come into play because in this particular scene um the the guy the the the, the person whose product it was I suppose he was in charge of like I don't know whatever it is but he has the product which is a beer and they're in front of all these marketers and he's going okay so the guy who drinks this is the average guy maybe he likes to um do some hand like I don't know whatever it is like man stuff on the weekend and he's this kind of and they were really like discussing who this person was in depth and like speaking about it to this group of people and and that was the 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 market the person who was whose product it was, the beer, he was talking, I suppose, maybe not in that way, but everyone was discussing who the customer avatar was. And um, because where I've sort of come from in my background with marketing, uh, uh, formally, um, because I feel like we're all marketing um, on a, a daily basis, really, that's just kind of part of life. But in my formal professional experience marketing, I've never really come at an avatar from that angle where it's like, you know they have all these these elements to it um and i think i think that that can be um difficult for people who are uh small business owners because i that is almost like a abstraction of a person that you're applying to your business and i don't think that's necessarily like a skill that we're that's inherent for us like how if you're just someone who sells stuff, how do you then go about this process of creatively psychoanalyzing a particular person? It's pretty difficult. So that's kind of what I want to do um, is um, break down a concept of avatar. So to help everyone, um, I guess, let go of things that aren't important. I think that we we focus way too much on labels. We focus way too much on demographics and um, and fully ground ourselves in what's useful. Um, so uh, reverting back to uh, the call yesterday with Dennis, we had, um, and I had, I, <laughs> I actually was like sleeping and I was like thinking this through in my head because I, I tend to do that. Um, we had this idea where he, and I've got this, uh, this, um, sort of mapped out in my head now in the diagram and as an affiliate marketer how do you construct an avatar for the product you're promoting and I've kind of come up with this um this theory that you you don't really construct your own avatar if you're not selling your own product and I think for a lot of small business owners as well you're you're actually sell. You're, it's very rare for us to just like to design and create a product ourselves and then create a like an avatar for that um so I think the best way to look at an avatar when you're just getting started or you're this you're having like a side hustle or you're promoting someone else's products or you're just you know you're just drop shipping on Amazon is to actually start from the product and we have to disconnect ourselves from us to a certain extent or um our our branding image in favor of putting the product message first. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of like um, detangle these things first uh, for us. Um, I know that throughout my process of working of starting my business, that I've kind of had this this vision in mind about you know whatever I want to um, create in the world, and I've used my business as or in my head as a way to um, execute that. And so my avatar, who I'm who I'm thinking of, is someone like me, um, and and that's a great place to start. And I'm thinking about um, you know what what kind of brand I want, and I've got my colours in mind, and where what this person wants to do with their life, and it's very very focused on on myself, which is relevant because I'm selling a product which I bought into. So I'm like, okay, these two things match, and there is some relevance there. But what I'm not thinking about is the product itself already has very specific people that it matches with and I think especially and I'm probably going to focus this on affiliate marketers if you're an affiliate marketer and you're coming up with your own brand image and your own brand thing unless you're selling multiple items at once 
um, it's just not helpful to start off with thinking about your own brand image, like a brand identity, because if you even think about the word, if you're an affiliate marketer, you're affiliating with a product. So that's already dealt with for you. And if you're affiliated with a good product as well, they've already got their brand image. They've already got that stuff laid out for them and laid out for you to just go ahead and promote. So I think the best strategy in terms of constructing an avatar when uh, promoting an affiliate product um, is to just think about the product as a starting point. And I think this is contrary to what a lot of people say in marketing, that you have to like focus on the messaging and the pains and all this stuff. But it's like, what ground, where, where, where's the grounding come from? Because, and I, I find this a lot as well with people who are, I work with and who are part of my community, they construct adverts and they construct messages, but there's no end to the amount that they can explore and rewrite and edit and restart again. It just feels like there's no real solid parameters. And I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely familiar with this, like so, so familiar with this. I'm a totally creative person and I think in sort of like a lot of um, <clears throat> vines, I suppose. And so <clears throat> you should think about an avatar, not in a way as like, who is the ideal person to connect with? But you can think of them as a way to ground you into what's relevant. And relevance comes from whatever it is you're selling. And so I, I'm, I, I've, especially since spending time in this online business, um, in a, like online business environment um, and where we're developing the skills for marketing and we're all taught to really focus on the pains and the messaging and stuff like that I see that it's really steered us away from the the real conversation and the fact of the matter is you've got to sell a product and there are people that are relevant for that product and there are people that are irrelevant for that product and when you bring your brand into question you are essentially creating an abstraction from the product and sometimes that's detrimental sometimes it's not i'm not saying like <clears throat> i'm not saying you shouldn't be branding but i'm saying like branding is almost like a higher tier it's more like branding helps us helps us gr I think branding is much more next level, right? So if you're if you're someone who's just starting out, and I think most of the people listening to me are just starting out and they're trying to make sales online or they're trying to do this, you don't need to have your big brand image developed. Um, and it, I think that can be detrimental to the product. And the way I the way I actually um, <laughs> conceptualize this in my head, uh, so I'm going to use Dennis as an example. Dennis's avatar, um, from what I believe is, um, well, it's a person who's interested in sport. So I'm going to try and stay down that thread. Um, and he's promoting a, the, the, like which I'll be referring to a lot throughout this, you know, workshop series and online business education to help, um, which teaches you the skills to create an online business, basically from scratch. Um, and now this can be based on your own interests. It can be affiliate marketing, various different options. But his person who he believed, or, or at least he's constructing, I'm not going to say he believed as if it's not true because it is true as much as he's determined that. Um, but I'm going to dispute it in terms of how useful the avatar he's constructed is in terms of making money on this particular product. Not other products, just this particular product. So it's drawing correlations between um, the top priority. And he said to, on the call as well yesterday that he's developed this shop, or, the, or the, not necessarily a shop, sorry, this uh, website as well, which um, also speaks to these people uh, in however, whatever way it does. And so my the way I the way I was thinking about this last night, I literally went to bed like ruminating on it, and I came up with a shoe shop as an example. So um, lots of different types of shoe shops, right? And I think most people who have the shoe shop, you've got all different kinds of brands in the shoe shop. Like, and so your brand would then be the brand of someone who has lots of brands. So then you have to brand yourself as uh, a, a, a per, like you're not Nike and you're not not Nike. You're a distributor of Nike and also of Adidas and X, Y, Z. Well, depending on what kind of shoes you want to go down, if you're, if you're office shoes or whatever. You know, you, you pick who your brand is a brand that has lots of brands. 
and then you have to develop that avatar. And what I felt like in the example that Dennis gave yesterday is he's a he's going to be a specialist sports shoe shop, right? It's like so golf shoes, bowling shoes, running shoes. They're all specialist shoes. Mm. And so the brand that Dennis and it's, I think when you think of it in terms of that, you go, oh yeah, that's very clear. It's a very clear kind of person who would want that kind of product. Very very clear. So they are going to be someone who is very invested in a sport because. You know, if you're just running around the park, you can just go get a trainer from Foot Locker or whatever, and it's fine. But if you want to run track, you need the studs in your shoes. So you go to a specialist shoe shop, and maybe there'd be a specialist shoe shop for just running shoes. I don't know. But for, for the sake of this argument, the brand that I've constructed is a an owner of a specialist sports shoe shop. And so the person, and you can say all people... All avatars that are relevant for that shop are people interested in sports and who need footwear. So there's this like, there's this relevance. They're, they're, they need the sports element to be there because otherwise, why would they be in that shop? It's got zero interest to them. They're not interested in it. And the necessity, it will help them improve their game or whatever it is. So we've got these this balance of these two things, relevance versus necessity. And I really think that's where the avatar comes in when you think of the product and you say relevance versus necessity. Now, so we've got these two identities almost. So we've got this brand identity of someone who sells lots of specialist footwear. And then we've got the the, foot, the specialist footwear. And then we've got the people that come here. And now what has happened is this is a specialist sort of thing. And it's, it's much more focused with, and I'm using, I'm abstracting Dennis a little bit, but let's use you as an example. Um, that is much more, that brand itself is super relevant to um, Dennis's interests, right? Super relevant. He really likes sports. He really likes um, it's specialist sports as well. It's not just like, you know, I don't know, playing rounders on the field, like really likes to get into it. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't need specialist equipment. Now, he's also affiliated with Nike. Nike needs, some, Nike needs to sell shoes. OK, and so we're like, OK, well, great. I've got a shoe shop. These two things, you know, work. And my my customers have feet. So I could sell them the shoes, the night shoes. It's like mm -hmm. the relevance versus necessity kind of contradicts itself there. So we've got this brand person here and then they're connected to this other person. So not everyone relevant for this specialist shoe shop is going to be relevant for the Nike shoe. Doesn't mean you can't sell it. It just means that the brands don't quite align and they don't not align either. We can see, can we see how there's like similarities and relevance and necessity, but they're not like totally connected. And so if you then started stocking Nike shoes in the specialist shoe shop, oh, it's like, well, yeah, of course you're going to sell some because it's Nike and people coming in this shoe shop I might also go, oh, actually, yeah, I do I do also need trainers as well. But they haven't come there for that. You know, they haven't actually come through the doors for those things. So what, what's happening is then you're making sales with them. So you think, okay, well, yeah, this is obviously a successful business strategy because why wouldn't you sell these shoes? Because they're super popular. They're making lots of sales. Um, lots of people buy them. But the audience... If you've got, if you put like a hundred people that were relevant for this shoe shop in this room, they are not all going to be relevant for the the Nike shoes. You then have to start stocking other Nike shoes. You have to start stocking Adidas. You have to start stocking to make them because this person might not just be connect, might not be a Nike person. They might want Adidas. So then it's like this blending together of brands and concepts. Sorry. Um, allergies um, they've got this blending together of concepts and brands because there's these tenuous links between them we um, and I think this is like a really good example you can see these links right shoes sports athletics they all mesh together but they're different there's specialist there's well I'm not even saying Nike and this is what's really interesting okay we're going to say just for the sake of this particular example there's the specialist shoe shop where everyone goes if they want specialist shoes. And you that's you know, that's that's the thing that's done. And it's also connected to the brand 
identity and it's like deep within the person's interests. But then you have the generic shoe, which would be Nike. And you're going to sell some of those generic shoes because they are very generic and everyone does like generic stuff. But if you were Nike, you would not be generic. If you go, if you're, if you go have a, if you go into the Nike's messaging strategy, they have a very clear niche and they have, which is huge now, but there's niches within Nike, which is a way more sophisticated and impacting, impactful selling strategy they know their avatar and then they get celebrities in to endorse it and they specifically only speak to this market so they've really like carved this niche out of the you know out of the whatever so it's like it's not so you can and then what's happening now now is like so you've got these these different entities if you're the owner of this specialist shoe store and you want to focus on the people that are coming into your specialist shoe store but buy shoe store but buying the nikes it's qualifying to a detriment it's like it's 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 leaving a huge percentage of people out that are relevant for the nike shoe and also not serving the people in the specialist shoe shop for what they're there for and so now you're marketing to bring those people in, your cost per sale is going to be high, right? Because it's just going to be what they're not going to be super relevant for. And you're and what you're doing as well in, in that sense is you're marketing the Nike shoe within your specialist shoe shop. So it's like it's not the most efficient strategy. An alternative would be to then just be outside on a market stall with lots of Nike shoes. And then be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And on the side, I've also got my business that sells specialist shoe shops. They're different, but similar. And they're relevant. And you can have like this one brand, which has lots of different arms. But to combine the marketing message is not, is not the, the, the most effective way of marketing a product. And so that's the sort of like danger of presuming an affiliate product will just slot into your own brand. And then... As well, a lot of people I work with, they start, they want to emphasize the sale of this affiliate product because it's got a whole selling system in the back end. It's got, you know, it's got all the tech. It's a very high quality product on the back end and it's worth selling. Whereas what they are developing is still, you know, it's still sort of rickety and it's still got lots of testing phases to go through and it's still got all this stuff. So it's smarter as a business strategy to make, to sell the affiliate product because, there's a higher chance of getting traction on it. And so, but they're going through their own brand message to promote it. So it's like this disconnect. And this is one of the things I really, really see in, when people construct their avatar. So for instance, this affiliate product that Dennis is promoting, uh, and we're going to break it down because we kind of realized there was some, I've got my own definition of it. Um, but you know that it, there are because it's concept it is quite difficult to sometimes fully access one definition but um, the product is teaching people how to build an online business and um, the benefit of that is that it gives you more time let's just say that's the, that's the basis and Dennis wanted to um, promote it because someone who might need more time well in his in his perspective if is he wanted more time so he could focus, or I believe this, he could, could run marathons, let's just say. Wanted more time to invest in sport. Wanted more time to, um, yeah, to, to, to focus on a passion, let's just say. And so with promoting that, what he's done is there's the relevance and the necessity part of it, which is out of balance because they are, this person is relevant in the sense that they need more time and but it, it's not it's not relevant in terms of the fact that they are interested in sports what makes them relevant is much broader than that it's the fact that they um, they well the thing that makes them relevant is that they need more time in this particular example if you're positioning the product like this you'll learn how to build an online business so that you can create more time in your life what makes someone relevant for that is that they need more time in their life why do they need more time in their life? Perhaps they want to run a marathon. Perhaps they have, we used the example yesterday, three kids, never have time to spend with them. Perhaps they, um, 
I don't know, they want to get into flipping houses. So these three people, which could essentially be three different avatars, have the same problem. And the problem is actually the niche. The avatars are like these these examples of people, they then they're too defined to be the whole avatar. So and and positioning them as the front of the message. It doesn't. Pri- it creates that additional step. It's like the the shop has the sports shoe, and then next to it is the Nike, the specialist. It's it's almost filtering them through that sports sports shoe filter. So it 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 it, it qualifies them too much. Whereas what you could do is go straight from you to the to the shoe, the Nike shoe, or the the workshops or the affiliate product, which is like if you need more time. And it, this is how you would flip it. If you need, if you feel like you need more time in your life, maybe you've been, um, you want to train for a marathon and you're working all the time so you don't have any time to train for a marathon. Or maybe you are, again, and, and you don't even have to do the other examples, but the fact of the matter is what qualifies someone for a product that helps them get more time in their life isn't their hobby, it's their necessity, their need for time. That's what makes them relevant it's not that and so the hobby is great because it helps us um inject detail but it's a second in terms of priorities it's a second priority in terms of the messaging because what happens is if you flip it so it's like maybe you want to train for a marathon maybe you haven't um, got the time to do that the prioritizing of the marathon first suggests that the product that solves the problem is marathon specific and in terms of creating, in terms of the product that is available, which is learning how to build an online business to free up your time, it's not marathon specific. It's time specific, which is beneficial to someone who's running a marathon. It's also beneficial to someone, again, we said, we, I use this um, example, who's got three kids and needs to spend more time with their kids. <clears throat> so it's not that you have to get rid of that as a message, you can still have that person in mind, but you have to not focus on their label or what they want to do. You have to focus on what they desire that the product solves. So if if the product is helping them solve their time issue, then that's where the focus is. And it would start with, if you need more time in your life. Um, and that's also, which we also uncovered yesterday, it's, it's relevant um, in how I position the product specifically, because um, the way that I'm looking at the 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 because I'm an affiliate for this as well. Um, the way that I look at the lead magnet, which is free workshops, which teach you how well it's. I can't see any other way that these workshops. I can't. I couldn't see any other benefits. The workshops help you learn how to build sort of they they filter you mostly into the online selling system which is an education which teaches you how to build a sales funnel and the benefit of building a sales funnel is that you make sales on like in a mechanistic way so it sort of makes money whilst freeing up your time and so anyone who wants to make money in less time is relevant for their product and they might want to make money in less time because they're running a marathon or they might want to make more money in less time because of kids or whatever but that's how that's how that goes. However, there is also because this product, which we've discussed, this affiliate product, which we're aligning ourselves to, also has an alternative um, intro module, which is turning your passions and interests into an income. Um, there's a it's a it's a pivot of message, which is so that's where things get really tough. But that's how as well you think that's how we start to um determine the avatar it's not by it's not by focusing inwards it's by looking at what is available to us to construct an identity so um uh, so for instance for me the best thing for me to do because i understand so much about the mechanics of the workshops and also the initial modules within this affiliate program which are um teaching you how to build a personal sales funnel i can say like it's it's specifically for a person who wants more time and money and it's almost like this like it's like this bolt if you can imagine like this so i see it uh, obviously my brain is wild like if you get some like 
a lace netting on a windy day and you put a bolt into it and it just floats around. That's kind of how I see messaging. It, it can go in so many different directions. You can play with it in so many different ways. And with, with everything online these days, you've got emails, you've got landing pages, you've got thank you pages, you've got, it's very, very difficult to just have like everything along the way, but you should. Congruence is very powerful. But at the bare minimum, if someone's starting out, you need to have that bolt which grounds you right into it. And that bolt comes from the, the, the explicit value of the product you're promoting. And that's kind of how I do the launchable ad script structure as well. I do the one, two, three, three, two, one um, uh, process. So number one, um, what was it? Oh, <laughs> I've forgotten my own process now. Um, oh yeah, number one. What are you promoting? And I think this goes, this gets missed out so much. And even if you're not doing an affiliate product, even if you've got an e-commerce product, even if you've got these things, I think because digital marketing has blown up so much, we've been taught so much about avatar, we've been taught so much about messaging that we just forget that we're actually selling something. Um, and so number one, what are you promoting? And that's a definition, it's not analysis. To start with, you want to just define the parameters because it because analysis is much more conceptual. So you want to get what's what is the what are the solid non-negotiable parameters? What can you not escape from? Okay, once you've got those sorted out, then you say, well, what is the immediate benefit of this? So I think that um that messaging storytelling i think it's all this combination of two abstract ideas bridged together with one so it's almost like three steps in a way uh, what are you promoting what is the immediate benefit of what you're promoting like the un the unarguable benefit like nothing to do with whether this person can run a marathon or whether they can spend more time with their kids it's like what 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 is the in instant implication of this product and then what the third thing is, who are the kinds of people that would want that? And But then it's like, well, why as well? And it's the why, not necessarily the details or the labels that fuel the message. And so let's just talk about, I don't know, let's talk about deodorant, for instance. Okay, so Lynx, it's a great advert, right? I don't know if anyone remembers the old Lynx adverts where this guy just running through the streets and these women are chasing him. So basically, what are you selling? Well, it is an anti and as, de as detailed as possible as well. We want details. Um, antiperspirant deodorant that smells like, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I've got a deodorant, so I'm going to use that name because that's what I've got. It's citrus fusion. Okay, that's the deodorant. Now, what's the immediate benefit of that? Okay, so it is stops. <laughs> I can't, it's quite a visceral sort of product, but here we go. Um, stops you sweating, makes you smell nice, uh, or at, at least nice. Um, what else does it do? What is it? What other immediate benefit does it have? I guess it makes you feel dry, right? There's that immediate. Yeah, it does actually give you like the sensation of feeling dry. Um, what other immediate benefits are there to deodorant? Immediate. It's all smelling, feeling dry, and anti-sweating if it's anti-perspirant. I literally can't think of anything else. Now. What are those implications on someone's life? Will you feel more confident? Ah, okay, so let's just, and we'll just go with that for a second. It's not someone who wants to run a marathon but wants to stay dry. So it's, you know, because that's a bit too, like, okay, well, that's, that's true. That, that person does want that product, but they want that product so they can feel confident. And it's that confidence in their dryness or not freshness smelling they, that they can let go of the insecurity and maybe they can get on with their A game. So it's this, but then it's like, who, where else does this join? Okay, um, someone going, again, it's a confidence. I can't, I can't, like, it just draws me to this logical conclusion is confidence. I don't know where, what else it would give, like, what, why does someone need to feel, <laughs> I've got Mona just joined in, I'm talking about sweating. Why does someone need to feel dry and, and um, smell fresh? We're talking about deodorant, Mona. I can't see any other, um, I can't see any other benefit than the fact it makes you feel confident to just go out in the world and do whatever it is you want to do. So then that is the niche there. It's that confidence to um, be around people or do things without the insecurity that you smell bad. Now you can see 
that in itself is a niche, right? That's it. That's a relevant thing because then if we're promoting online business what do they want oh well I want time freedom to do whatever I want to do um if I had more time in my life I would feel free let's just say so you can say like oh well well, this person wants to feel confident at being around people this person wants to feel free to live life as they please well there's clearly there's those aren't the same people but yet we have lots of people that would fit this lots of people that would fit this and maybe even a lot of people from this category who will also fit this category but it doesn't mean you combine the marketing just because someone wants to build an online business and needs deodorant they have their own specific categories and you want to only filter your marketing to focus on the category that pertains to the product not um your brand which sits in the middle and i think this is great that we've got we've got this sports person who's got a sports shoe shop they also have an online business I don't know education they've also got a Nike thing going on and maybe they even sell deodorant they cannot all go into the same shop though they can't do that because they don't make sense and even though you're going to have customers that go to each of these shops it doesn't mean that all customers will go to each of those shops and if you only promote that one person who's likely to go to all those shops you're going to lose them because they'll be drawn to better marketing that is focused specifically on their particular problem for that for the reason they're going to that shop. So for instance, let me explain that more. Okay. So let's say you've got your your you've got your specific sports shoe shop, you've got your deodorant that you're promoting, you've got this, I don't know, Nike trainer, and we're gonna add these <laughs> affiliate workshops into it as well. There is gonna be a group of people that fit into that are like, oh my God, this guy is fantastic. He does this, he does this, he does this, he does this. And as chance would have it, I love all of those things. And I want all of those things. The problem is, is that there's not that many people that will only resonate with you for selling each of these abstract different items. So you're super niching down then. It's like that it's really, really overqualifying. Like I said, it's too, it's too qualifying for a, a strategic selling strategy. And what what is likely to happen is the competition of, let's say, the deodorant, let's say it's links that you're going up against, their marketing is going to be so much more attractive that you're going to struggle to keep this person who's interested in all the different things. And if you think about the average person, how many things do we buy that connects us to different people in these weird abstract ways? Like I could probably connect the weirdest people in the weirdest ways but in only that one way. And so you don't want to you don't want to market to the ab- obscure connections. Anyway, that's getting a bit uh, a bit difficult to to dissect there, but I think we get the point is that if again it's this whole concept if you market to everyone you market to no one. And also if you yeah, if you try and over specify, you also don't really um hit the hit the goals that you want to hit. And so that's kind of, um, that's that, that's how I want us to look at Avatar, that it derives from the, the specific product that we're promoting. And I think about this in terms of like, if I'm facing a landing page, I'm trying to solve, like I'm trying to figure out what the landing page, if I think about the landing page as its own product, what is the benefit for someone to be on landing page? Well, okay, so they could sub- submit their email. And I mean, I don't always go into this much depth, but I'm thinking about every single step of the way as if it's got its own agenda and what someone's going to benefit from that and what, you know, you've got to work out the benefits of each step of the way. Anyway, so my my perception of Avatar isn't to, it, it isn't to figure out why I need deodorant or why I need online business training or because then I'm going to be thinking, well, then it means that I get to spend more time with my family. Oh, OK. And that's the main priority. Although that being said, spending time, spending more time with family, I think is. I think is more relevant in terms of the affiliate marketing thing we just discussed with the online business model, because it applies to a lot more people. So a lot more people are going to resonate even. So the marathon runner who needs more time to focus on running a marathon is going to resonate with the need to have more time to spend with his family, which he will then apply to his training. Then would someone who needs to spend more time with their family resonate with a message about 
not having enough time to run a marathon. So this there's a generalization happening that's around this very specific topic, which people can draw their own implications from. So in that sense, yeah, I think that those kind of details, because they're they're more universal, much more universal. There's a lot less people that resonate with wanting to spend time with their family than wanting to run a marathon and needing the time. But, you know, anyway, you can still draw the same benefits. You use the you use the storytelling. To, and I have an example of this as well. You use the storytelling of the person's circumstances to draw the metaphors, but you have to, it has to be clear that it's that metaphor so that they can draw that from. Now that's getting difficult because it's so hard because then it starts to contradict itself. The the reason, so I'm gonna rewind a bit. When I was talking about um, the time situation and I talked about the family as an okay, more of a relevant thing to talk about than the marathon in terms of promoting it, which potentially could even be prioritized first, is because of the generalized relevance of the, the unique problem. So the problem, like we, like we spoke about, the deodorant makes you feel com- confident, which means you can go on a date. And that's quite a universal experience that solves the problem of lack of confidence. Like if you want to go on a date and you don't want to smell, lots of people have that experience and it's that lack of confidence that is still solving. But if you go to that um, abstraction where you've got the the desire to have more freedom in your life, which an online business would give you, more people would understand the metaphor of not being able to spend time with their family and being distant from their family then would understand of not having time to train for a marathon. That's my, my my theory anyway. But someone who wanted to train for a marathon could resonate with the message of someone not having more time to spend with their family. Anyway, so I want to move past that anyway because I, I feel like I did a really good job of rounding it off and now I've just opened up another can of worms. Um, essentially, the point of everything I just said is that you want to, you want to derive the – you don't want to go further – away from the product then two steps outwards I think that's the best way to solve it if you're not entirely sure who your avatar is don't go further than what is the what am I selling what is the immediate benefit of what I'm selling that's that's the first abstraction and the third abstraction is why do they want that and it will be the emotion confidence um, freedom satisfaction um, happiness fulfillment and then it's a story that sort of tells the story tells that represents that emotion but don't go further than the emotion don't lean into the story more than the emotion so it's like that three steps and no more because otherwise then it just goes off and you don't have a clear picture what are you promoting what's the immediate benefit of what what you're promoting why does someone want that benefit and as and uh, just to just to round off quickly if you've got deodorant it makes you smell nice it stops you sweating it helps you feel dry why would someone want that? To feel confident to go out and do things in life. An example of things they could do, go on a date. But the confidence is the thing you want to portray in your marketing, not the date. Because if you portray the date, then they're going to think it's a dating app rather than deodorant. So you don't want to portray the, you want to portray the, the emotion that's being handled, not the, not the situation as the priority. Okay. So there's that. Um, and it, so it, that all comes from the product. So I'm very specific, especially if where we're at as well, like the early stage marketers, like we need to really, really know what we're selling. Really, really. Like your first priority should be make sales. And you do that by saying it like it is. I sort of had this um, concept a while back that I wanted to just teach people how to say it like it is like just describe what it is to me and I've actually encouraged I I don't often recommend reading material because I find that a lot of copywriter books I find interestingly a lot of books that teach copywriting are just copywriting themselves into a sale like they want you to buy into their course or something like that so it's a bit it's a bit um it's a bit biased and it's not actually very useful and representative plus I don't actually think they're very good at copywriting um but that's probably me just being um egotistical um, but I do recommend a book called Obvious Adams. And I think just just getting in the mindset of like not making it into this big like confetti thing and making it into much more practical and tangible. Like the best copywriting I see is just straight up. 
And now you get the you get the creative copywriting, which is like it it really plays on a metaphor, but that's like that's like a that's a few stages up and it's not necessary as well. That's something I want to say. Like here, here's the main thing that we've got to do. It's like, okay, you want to develop an avatar so that you can sell your product. You don't need to make it complex. Now, this is where I think it connects to our I, not, I don't want to say our ego, but to a certain extent, I think it does. Because uh, I guess drawing this round to the beginning, I I have this very clear concept of the message I want to deliver to the world. You know, and my thing is much is very much based on communication. I really, really care about communication and teaching people the skills of communication. And I've kind of niched that in with marketing. Um, that when I was, maybe when I was first, uh, marketing I wanted to blend those two things together to, but it created this dissonance and it didn't quite fit and work as well as it could have done because I wasn't really prepared to adopt the label of the brand I was promoting I didn't really want to let's say it's not me this isn't my brand this is this is this is them and taking a step back I literally think if you're an affiliate and you want to prioritize the sale of an affiliate product to make an income you should be as invisible as possible and the product should be as far forward as possible so I now try my hardest to align all my marketing specifically to the product that I'm promoting and that includes my own as well but let's just say if it's an affiliate product I want to use their branding colors I want to use their font I want to filter into them as soon as possible because I don't know if anyone else feels this as well when I when you get into an affiliate product you can get this confusion like well who is this person in relation to this and this or the other so what you want to do is you just want to um disconnect yourself from your brand if you are prioritizing the sale of an affiliate product and even if you're the person selling specialist shoes, if you've got someone who comes in and they're like, I want bowling shoes, you don't start talking about you and who you're relevant to. You start talking about the brand of the bowling shoe and you even compare brands or whatever, you know, it's, it's always putting the product first in relevance to the person. OK, so um, where did the, the way. So, OK, so to in, in order to sort of like round that off is I think we have to somewhat disconnect from our perception of what we want to create in the world and what we want our message to be perceived in order to highlight the value of the product itself. Like we really have to start, like we really have to say like, and, and this it doesn't just apply to affiliate marketing. It applies to, you know, whatever business it is. The thing that you're selling has to be the star of the show. And if there's anything that contradicts to that, then you have to get rid of it including what your perceptions of your avatar are. You have to perceive what their avatar is and promote that. Um, now, there's 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 light, okay, because it's like, oh, like some of us get into online business because we want to make a mark on the world. We actually want to have our brand in the world. We want to be noticed. And I'm, I'm you know, guilty of this because I've got my own brand as well as my promotion as um, an affiliate. But... I don't, so for instance, um, you know, my Facebook group, the Ad Lab, I've got Launchable, which is my own brand as well. And Launchable is um, is a philosophy of moving forwards, even if, you, you know, not over perfecting things um, so that you can move forward to your marketing, get the data, get the feedback and actually move forward like that. And it's also an ad scripting sort of coaching uh, business. Now, when I'm promoting, um, when I'm promoting workshops to learn the skills to build an online business, I'm not promoting them as the owner of Launchable. I'm kind of promoting them as Caroline, someone who's used the skills to set up my own business. And sort of, I want to push my brand away from it as much as possible because my avatar for my coaching service or my avatar for my, um, my Facebook group, let's just say, because they have their own different ones. They're different. They are not the same avatar that I have for promoting affiliate products they're, comp they're not completely different it's like the shoe shop the specialist shoe versus the trainer shoe there's some crossover but I'm not going to combine those messages together because I'm not going to water down my message I'm going to say this person is specifically relevant for this product okay now it kind of bleeds over because like a lot of the people that are relevant for 
learning how to build an online business also need to learn how to create adverts for their business. But there are lots of people that need to create adverts for their business that don't need to go through the other training. We keep them separate. So that's that's then business development and creative strategic marketing development. And when things start getting complicated because you have to juggle a lot of things and I have to I've, I've got I've got staff now to help me with these things. Now, I couldn't I could not I couldn't cope with all the various different messagings unless I had staff. Like the bigger your brand gets, the more messages you have, the more help you need. It gets very complicated. So if you're starting out already with this brand and you're promoting another one, it's just going to be too complicated. You need to start from square one, promote one thing to one person, refine that, hone it in, chat, like experiment, and then add another brand or develop your brand from that once you've got that. So that's my sort of perspective on Avatar, where I think people in my particular industry who are beginner marketers, um, beginner business owners even, go wrong, is that the training on the training that is a, is available online is all about messaging. It's all about pains. It's all about problems, and I do think that there, there is space for that. But I think it's just gone too far in the in the direction of um, fluff, basically. And there might be a period, and I also I just to sort of advocate as well. There might be, and not even just a period, but a circumstance as well when it goes too far into the product where it's feature dumping like that. And it's got like, you can't, what happens then is like, I'm just describing a product, but there's no, there's no way to connect a person to why that's useful for them. So let's just say, and I'm going to try and keep it simple. I've got a table. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so I, it's like four bits of wood upright with a slab on top. Um, and it's kind of varnished with this, like, I don't know, lacquer type thing. And it's got these like bolts around the sides and that keeps the legs together. And what it happens is it's like, someone's like, why do, why is that relevant to me? Who, why do I need that? What, like you, you lose interest because it doesn't connect with your pains and problems. So I'm not saying, <clears throat> I'm not saying that connecting with, messaging or like pains and problems of your avatar is wrong I'm just saying what I see most in the industry that I'm in and with my clients and with my the, the community that I'm a part of is that from learning this the marketing skills marketers have solved the initial problem of feature dumping by emphasizing the value on messaging to the point where now everyone with at least within this community or like within the digital marketing, the, the amateur digital marketing space, they are only focusing on the messaging and not the product. And so I do think that it's a, it's a balance between the two, but I'm just trying to solve a particular problem that I see most of all. Um, and I think there's still, there's still a lot of realms online, or there's still a lot of businesses that only talk about the, pro, the, the, the parameters of a product to the point where they don't make any sales either. So um, I'm not even just saying that this period that we're in um, struggles with over messaging, I suppose. I, I think there's still lots of businesses that do this and don't 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 speak enough to the messaging. But I think um, again, I just want to solve the pro problems I see in front of me, and on that's on uh, what I see within the community that I'm in and within the part the, the realm of business I'm in is a, a, a lean way too far into messaging and not enough focus on the product. And that's the most important place to start. Because to start with, you just want to be making sales. And I love this example as well. Like, Phil, like as well. So obviously, everyone knows my um, my launchable ad script has five calls to action. Um, and you will never, you won't even see a call to action in Nike. They don't have that. They just have like a trainer floating through the air in their adverts. You're like, why are you making millions of sales? It's, you know, it's because... Phil Knight had his days of just driving around LA with a hundred trainers in his back, just flogging trainers and showing them the dimensions of like the soul. Like, look, it's flexible and it weighs this much and it does all these things, which he doesn't have to do now because he's got such a good reputation. You know, the reputation of Nike is so great that we don't need to know all the, all the, like the features. But when we're starting out, you have to be, you have to be specific about what you're selling. And, um, 
speak about how those elements of what you're selling are relevant to your avatar. Um, okay. I don't think there's any more that I need to go on that. Um, that was an hour <laughs> of me talking. So for anyone who's managed to um, stay tuned with me, um, thanks. Um, I'm interested, are there any questions? I've got Hassan. Uh, as an affiliate, I love your, oh, all right, that was private, but I'm going to, ah, okay, that's great. So I've got some positive feedback on that. Uh, Mary said it was a brilliant explanation. Uh, I think it was good to start with, and I might have gone off in a bit of a tangent, um, but, you know, it is what it is, but I appreciate your um, feedback. Um, have I got anyone to ask a specific question? Um, is there anything that you need answering? Anything need teasing out? Because I know that was kind of like um, reasonably complex and uh, abstract. All right. Oh, hey, Mary, do you want to come forward? Oh, sorry. Right. I muted everyone. There you go. Okay. When you said about the hobbies, um, they are not a necessity. They are just like the details that come in handy when creating a message, right? Um, uh, can you explain what, go into more detail with that? Yes. Um, to run a marathon, like that's their hobby. That's a detail that we can bring up in the messaging somehow. Yeah. Somewhere. Yes. Um, in, that should... particular, in that particular example. Yes. Because running a marathon could create the necessity for a product as well. So it's not, so in that particular example, yes, the details of wanting to run a marathon could be brought up and should be brought up in the messaging in, in that in that way. But the, if you are running a marathon, there is also a necessity to have certain products. And that's also important to connect with them on that say, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, yeah. So, but in your example, so it's not necessarily a hobby. It's just like the reason for the necessity, basically. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. The necessity dictates the need to buy, but mm -hmm. the the reason for the necessity is, um, yeah. I, I guess it's it's hard to sort of explain it in labels, but yeah. yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So it can be a hobby. It can be time with family. It can be all of those things. Basically, that's the reason. Um, it's not necessarily like a hobby. It can be many different things, just like the reason. Mm. Um, yeah, so what what are you what are you drawing this to? I'm just trying to like ground myself and mm, let's use the example of affiliate, right? Yeah. For um for an online business. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like choosing the reason, um, it literally comes down to just choosing which one. Um I, uh, okay yeah so what what well what I would do um okay so what I would do is I would identify the value of the bet so we've got the you know I think the, the three two one one two three process what are you promoting workshops that teach you how to build an online business what's the immediate benefit of this the immediate benefit of that is that um you'll learn you'll know more in 45 minutes than you did yeah. when you started about what direction to go down um so you'll be more educated why mm -hmm. would someone want that well because they want it could be in terms of hope right they want more hope for their future well who well then that's the message there that's the niche someone who wants more hope for their future because perhaps they're working 75 hours a week and don't get to see their kids perhaps it's because you know it's that perhaps those details are really are really important it's just the way they're positioned has to prioritize the the value of the benefit of the product. Interestingly, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the value of the product; it's the value of the benefit, which is potentially hope or potentially uh, freedom or potentially you know. So I guess what it seems what it seems clear to me at this present moment in time is that the value of the benefit of the product um, boils down to a one word a one word definition that can be applied to multiple labels mm. and it's the one word definition that has the significance not the label and the label helps boost the the resonance of the meaning of the the, the yeah I'm losing myself in this yeah the me the, the the details of the person who 
like the details of the story boosts the value and the resonance of us connecting to that word. So if the value of the benefit of the product is freedom, that's that's the main focus, but the story should emphasize. So the story should push it above. And there's the problem when the story goes above that, that makes us think that the story is to do with the, a product that's specific to the story, marathons, or even like family. Like could it could be like, I don't know, a new dinner service or whatever to help you spend more time with the family, something like that. So it's, it's yeah, that's what I think is the, the most important thing. Um, got Hassan, totally agree. The workshops are already branded and sell well. As an affiliate, love your one, two, three product service, immediate benefit, and who I would anyone buy. I'm going to work on this. Ah, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that's, um, I think that's the best way to boil it down. There's like four parts. Interesting, I've got the three parts, but there's a fourth. Um, and it, I think the way I would order it is like, at the top, so it kind of like, I guess I'm going to draw a little, little diagram. Um, one, two, three, so if that's how it would go, you've got what you're, in terms of where everything should be prioritized in your messaging, this is like a visual representation. This is what are you promoting? What's the immediate benefit? Why? And then what's a, what's a story that, that resonates with this? So this is the most important thing, but it has these relationships to these things which shouldn't be taken away. Although I think, to be honest, this like these two are more important than this one. This one does add depth, though. But so it's like once you get here, that's the most important thing. So don't have. So it would be it wouldn't be a good strategy if it went like that. This why is the is the reason people buy. But if you start with the anecdote as the most important thing, it, it this bit's not good. This this is going to feel like the why. It's going to feel like that's so. That if you're if if the why if this bit here, which is the anecdote, let's just say, is talking about uh, let's just say a marathon, they're going to presume that it's the why, and so they're going to presume the product is marathon related rather than freedom related or hope related, or something like that. So we got to this, this, this story should go here. And the story helps, again, it's, it pushes that up. So it helps us, it helps it, it helps it sink in more and feel more real and, 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 and tangible. That's something I talk about a lot as well, feeling tangible. So anyway, it's hard to turn, <laughs> it's hard to sort of like, make a visual representation of what I think a story is because it's so abstract, but that's kind of how I see it. Um, I hope that made some sort of sense. Um, is there any, are there any more questions? Cool. I think that's a wrap then for the day. Um, ah, I'm really enjoying these. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week. The way I was going to do these lectures um, was that I was going to do um, one on like an overview that it was going to be the relatability section and the tangibility section and all that stuff um but then I went into such detail in the first call about all those sections I'm like well that's that covered so now I have to sort of like make it up as I go along so I thought avatar would be a good one um maybe uh it might be how to define the product or something next week I'll come up with something um in order for us to 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 ground us into I guess what we're doing um, let me see what Dennis said. Oh, back to the drawing board. Make it easy for yourself, I think. Right, straight, sell, just sell the train, sell Nike. I know it's, a, it's not as exciting as, as, a, as a bowling shoe, but, you know, you've got an audience of Nike buyers. Sell Nike, to start with anyway. Um, okay, going to call it a day. I would love to um, hear your feedback, comments, um, insights, anything as well, any information on on more that you would like to learn about that would be very useful for me um because this is a brand new project for me and uh yeah I'm just sort of I imagine over time it will become refined but it's not right now <laughs> so if anyone has any um ideas or anything post in the Facebook group send me a message send me a carrier pigeon um you know or chase Katie down because she's handling all that stuff for me until next Tuesday guys I will speak to you then Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Bye.